Welcome to Agoracom, the small cap epicenter at Agoracom TV, a daily, fast-paced, edgy show that brings you the best press releases out of the small cap world every morning at the open so you can hopefully profit from them and maybe even find your next great small cap investment. It's Tuesday, January the 8th. Got eight press releases for you from both sides of the border, so we're going to move fast. First one is brought to you by our sponsor, Rolling Rock Resources. They've sponsored today's episode because they had great news. They traded on the TSX Venture on the stock symbol RLL. They announced that their Monument Bay Gold resource has increased by 35%. This is an updated resource estimate prepared by the very well-respected Wardrop Engineering for its 100% owned high-grade gold Monument Bay property, which is located in northern Manitoba. This is an inferred resource summary. The total database comprises about 415 drill holes aggregating over 113,000 meters so it's a pretty big sample here uh, the inferred resource estimate which is NI4311 compliant is now 4,888,000 tons grading 6, 6.01 grams per ton which equates to 944,000 ounces of gold that's at a cutoff grade of 3 grams per ton that's up 34.6% compared to what they previously had uh, Scott Angus president and CEO of the company he summarizes up pretty good here when he says, We are very pleased with the updated resource at Monument Bay, which shows a significant increase from the 2006 estimation. And with our greater understanding of the deposit, we can now move forward with a scoping study as this project's next step. So obviously good things still to come out of, out of uh, Rolling Rock Resources. Fully diluted, this company has about 36 million shares outstanding. They're trading at 15 cents uh, as of yesterday's close. You do the math there and a little digger deeping here. Here, a, a little deeper digging here uh, reveals that Kinross Gold owns approximately 20% of this company. Good news out of Rolling Rock Resources. Next up, Tanganyika Oil Country uh, Oil Company trades on the venture under TYK. Production increased 37% from the third quarter, and they've updated the fourth quarter production and the December uh, exit rates. Gross field production was boosted by over 3,300 barrels of oil per day. That's a 30% increase during Q4. They've also got three new drill rigs uh, that are going to be coming onto the project. Uh, first one is going to be in mid-February, second one by end of February, third one before the end of March. So obviously uh, Tanganyika is on the move. Now, they are trading at $12.40, which is pretty high for most TSX venture companies, but they are offering their high of $24. I did take a look at the chart. They fell significantly from about $16.50 in December. It looks like tax loss selling. So do your own due diligence, but this may be a good value uh, play as they announce increased production. Diamonds North Resources trades on the Venture Exchange under DDN. They announced a recovery of 550 diamonds from 81.75 kilograms. That's on their Took Two. Took two one Kimberlite located at the company's 100% owned Amarok property in Nunavut. Uh, this is a this is a, a, a this is this is from a, a one drill hole sample. A bulk sample program is planned for this Kimberlite. But uh, what's significant here, the company views these results as very significant because it's generally considered highly positive to recover one diamond per kilogram of Kimberlite. Took two has yielded nearly seven diamonds per, t per kilogram. Uh, diamond results for 18 additional Kimberlites are pending. Diamonds North traded yesterday. It closed at 78 cents. Next up, Bellhaven Copper and Gold trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under BHV and Dominion Minerals trades on the OTC under EMPL. They announced the intersection of 194 meters of 0.72% copper and extended high grade mineralization. This is at their Chetta Chorcha Copper Project. Uh, disclosure Bellhaven is a client of Agoracom, but this news definitely stands its own two feet. These are copy, go, copper, gold, and silver assay results from hole six and seven on a recently completed 11-hole diamond drill program, and this project is located in the western highlands of Panama. Hole 7 was drilled to, to test the eastward continuation. Hole, sorry, hole 6 was uh, drilled to test the eastward continuation. Hole 7 was drilled to test the northward continuation. Some pretty good highlights here. Uh, just go over a couple in hole number 0706, 346 meters, 0.42% copper, 0 0.05 grams per ton of gold, 1.4 grams per ton of silver, and continue with hole 6, 76 meters of 0.66% copper, 0.11 grams per ton of gold, and 1.9 grams per ton of silver. And hole number 7 uh, had a pretty big, in addition to 194 meters, we talked about also at 306 meters of 0.57% copper, 0 0.04 grams per ton of gold, and silver assays are pending. The company closed yesterday. This is Bellhaven at 68 cents. 
East Asia Minerals trades on the Venture Exchange under EAS. They drilled 35.95 meters of 4.03 grams per ton of gold and 188.28 grams per ton of silver, confirming more, and confirming more than one kilometer of strike potential. This is at their bind based prospect uh, in Indonesia. They encountered significant near surface epithermal gold and silver mineralization in all holes completed to date. Take a look at holes 13, 12, and 11. They've got the assay results there. Some pretty nice numbers. Michael Hawkins, President and CEO of EAS, uh, uh, taking an excerpt from his quote, we're well on track to outline an NI43-101 compliant resources at, Sa at their uh, Sangi property during 2008. The company closed yesterday at $1.50. Switching over to the U.S. and the OTC, great news out of Tix Corp. Trades there in the stock symbol. T-I-X-C. They announced both a record fourth quarter and record year numbers for their ticks for tonight uh, subsidiary in Las Vegas. This is their Las Vegas half price same day ticket business called ticks for tonight. Fourth quarter numbers for uh, December 31st. Gross ticket sales $10.9 million up 50%. For the entire year $34.5 million up 49%. Let's call that 50%. Uh, what do they do? Sell tickets for Las Vegas shows concerts, attractions, and sporting events at discounts up to 50% off the face value of the ticket on the same day of the performance. They closed yesterday at $5.40. Great news out of TixCorp. Unity Wireless trades on the OTC under UTYW. Announced that they won a um, WiMAX repeater project. This is with one of North America's largest wireless manufacturers, and they've received the first, first purchase order of over $400,000 for immediate delivery. Uh, this is on their existing WiMAX repeater product. Based on the client's forecast, the company is estimating that this could represent over $10 million of business for Unity Wireless for these WiMAX repeaters. Got to look out for that, but if they're saying that in the press release, there must be something to that. And what do they do? They're a provider of wireless coverage enhancement solutions and WiMAX products for cellular operators. That's what I like. They closed yesterday at just over four cents. And finally, BSM Technologies back on the TSX Venture Exchange trades on the stock symbol GPS. This isn't a GORCOM client, but we like the news out of them. Why? The, along with Bell Mobility, they're introducing a one bill solution. GPS, if you don't know, or BSM, if you don't know, is a leading provider of GPS automatic vehicle uh, location, fleet tracking, and security solutions. They're offering a one bill solution to Bell Mobility customers. Prior to this, customers would receive one bill from the carrier for the data charges and another from BSM for the AVL solution. That's the automatic vehicle location solution. Nick Sorella, president and CEO of the company, sums it up. This agreement dramatically expands the marketing relationship between BSM Wireless and Bell Mobility, offering a national sales presence in training and installation. Sentinel FM offers one of the most robust and sophisticated AVL GPS solutions available to the public today. The agreement increases the sales, marketing, and revenue generating opportunities for both partners. The company closed yesterday at 12 cents. That's it for the day. A lot of news, eight different press releases. As always, don't forget about the Agoracom Marketplace where you can find more great small cap, small cap companies. We've separated them by industry and exchange so you can find the ones best suited for your portfolio needs. Uh, that's it for the day. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.